Hi, thank you for joining me for another short talk. And friends, today I want to speak to you about judges and prophets. The office of the judge is never mentioned. Why is that? We know about the office of the priest, the king, the prophet, but the judge is never mentioned. As a matter of fact, the role of the judge is mentioned more than the role of the prophet and the role of the king in Torah. But for some reason, people think that that office just disappeared. And this is really what separates the modern Karite movement from rabbinic Judaism. In other words, the modern Karite movement walks around thinking the whole Tanakh is on the level of the five books of Moses. They feel they have this imperative to decipher scripture on their own. There is no need for a judge. Because right when you mention judge, it's automatically attached to the notion of consensus. In other words, a ruling body deciding ceremonial law, i.e. civil law of that time for Israel. For what? So that Israel can progress in a uniform manner. And this is very scary for anyone who believes in any movement where you are expected to decipher everything on your own not even knowing the biblical language. So that is really the foundation of rabbinical Judaism, the notion of the judge. Now, let's not get stuck on semantics. Many people ask me, where's the word rabbi? Where are there rabbis in uh, Torah times or in the times of King David? My friend, the term judge is what was known as the elders, the rabbis, the sages, the men of the great assembly, they were all judges. They were fulfilling the office, the role of the judge that appears in Torah, clear cut. And they'll say, well, we have books of the prophets. Why don't we have books with uh, the rulings of these judges, right? The books of the judges. Well, of course we have judgments written down. That's what the Mishnah is. So they'll say Mishnah, but well, that's outside of scripture. Who do you think compiled scripture to begin with? It was these judges. So the same judges, the men of the great assembly who compiled and wrote almost all the books in Tanakh outside of Torah are the same rabbis that appear in the Mishnah who give an account of their rulings. In other words, the Mishnah is on the same level of the books of the prophets. One is getting over prophecies and one is giving over judgments, both authored by the same judges. You understand where I'm getting at? This is a huge disconnect, and this is why all these former Christians are becoming Karaites, because they don't have a rabbi explaining it to them correctly. The Mishnah is on the same level as the books of the prophets. One is giving over judgments, and one is giving over prophecies, whether those prophecies are applicable or outdated. Same thing with the Mishnah. One's giving over laws, whether those laws are applicable or outdated. So, the judges are to the Mishnah what the prophets are to the books of the Nevi'im, the books of the prophets, the historical account of the prophets. Now, I know for many, this is hard to understand because uh, They've been fed this false idea that the Torah is on the same level as the books of the prophets. In other words, Christians walk around, Karaites walk around, quoting the prophets just as reverently as they would quote, say, for Shemot or Devarim. That's where the mistake began. So they feel that you're in some way elevating the Mishnah to the level of the Torah by saying that the Mishnah is on the same level as the prophets and even the writings. Now, the difference, the main difference between the books of the prophets and the Mishnah, the books of the judges, is that the job of the judge was to institute law, institute Torah, although there's always a distinction made between rabbinic law and Torah law. Their job was to institute law. 
the job of the prophet was to give us warnings to bring us back to Torah when we begin to stray not to establish law so this is why the oral law the rulings of the courts are more applicable to us than the books of the prophets both carrying the same amount of weight one describing the prophet one describing the judge what they have to say but one is there to judge to establish norms mind you rabbinic norms but still norms and one has the task bringing israel back to torah no matter where they happen to be which is why that we even have prophets alive today it's really just a midrashic idea that after the destruction of the second temple prophecy was only given to children and crazy people that's one statement in the talmud but there's another point of view that prophecy never ended this is how the rambam held and this is how i hold why because the torah never said prophecy was going to end this so why should we assume it in other words when we get brought back to israel when we repent and God forbid, if we begin to stray, the Almighty will send us prophets again. Like Deuteronomy chapter 18 says that he will raise up for us a prophet once we begin to emulate the nations that we've displaced. And it'll go over and over again. So the next time someone speaks about the oral law or the Mishnah, please take the words in there as seriously as you take the words in the prophets.